Today on How It's Done, Bioprinting, the 3D construction of transplantable human body parts. A revolutionary area of research for transplantation technology, bioprinting refers to three-dimensional printing of biological tissue and organs through the layering of living cells. While this technology is still in an experimental stage, it is currently used in scientific studies rather than a clinical setting. The possibilities of creating artificial tissues or organs will one day transform medical treatment. The availability of donor organs is limited, with statistics reporting, on average, a daily mortality rate of 21 Americans from the shortage of donor organs. Today, we show you the equipment and the methodology involved in creating artificial transplantable constructs. There are three things that researchers need to be able to bioprint body parts. Firstly, a bioprinter is required. This is basically a 3D printer that deposits living cells in the desired pattern. A specific class, called extrusion printers, prints cells layer by layer, just like a 3D printer, to create 3D constructs. Extrusion methods use a syringe and a piston system to dispense material through microscale nozzles to produce stable 3D structures. This brings us to the next requirement, called bioink. This is a material made from living cells that behaves much like a liquid, allowing people to print it in order to create the desired shape. Also contained within the bioink are materials such as proteins, polymers, gelatin, hydrogel, and collagen, among others. These materials allow the printed constructs to mimic an extracellular environment to support the adhesion, rapid reproduction, and differentiation of living cells. The ink is filled into a cartridge and inserted into the bioprinter. Biopaper. The material upon which printers layer the bioink are the final component. This paper is usually a hydrogel, made up of a collagen-gelatin mixture that supports and hydrates delicate cells as they are layered. When the object is completed, the paper melts away or gets removed, and the new tissue structure is obtained. Although creating complex organs such as a heart or a lung are beyond the reach of current technology, independent research groups around the world have been able to create simple constructs such as an ear with a commendable degree of success. Let's take a look at all the steps taken by Kang et al. to build an ear. This research group used an ITOP, meaning Integrated Tissue Organ Printer, to bioprint a human ear. ITOP are a specific class of extrusion bioprinters. The ITOP system is able to produce tissue constructs with structural integrity and complex architectures. It prints cell-embedded hydrogels in a sequence with a polymer to promote cell survival as well as growth and expansion. The polymer serves as a scaffold, providing the structural and architectural integrity that is needed. The cells in the hydrogel bioink transition to form tissues by secreting their own matrix, which replaces the degrading hydrogel. Many cartridges are used to deliver the hydrogel, and each is connected to a nozzle and an air pressure controller, which precisely controls the volume dispensed. The process first starts with a CT scan of an ear, whose information is used to create a topographic 3D computer model. The 3D model is translated into a visualized motion program that guides the bioprinter nozzles to take specific paths for dispensing cells. The next stage involves the bioprinter layering the cells following instructions from the motion program. This creates the preliminary ear. When placed in a culture medium for five weeks, the construct produces new cartilage around itself. Researchers have confirmed the maturation of the printed ear constructs in vivo through implantation in mice and have reported good maintenance of shape as well as cartilage formation. Hopefully by now you understand some of the basics of bioprinting how constructs are designed, as well as manufactured. To talk a little bit more about the complications that can arise, as well as the future of this technology, we spoke to a master's professor of biomedical engineering, Dr. Ravi P. Salfgetvith. So some of the current limitations that are there uh, in bioprinting uh, are uh, the ability to form solid structural material that can span several centimeters in dimension. Uh, also integration of vascular networks is a big challenge. The ability to perfuse uh, various parts of the construct in order to deliver nutrients, remove waste, but also deliver oxygen. To keep the cells alive uh, is an important uh, issue that there are many groups that are currently trying to tackle, but so far uh, good solutions have not been fully developed yet. In terms of the technology, uh, there are many ways that this technology will be developed. Um, from an engineering perspective, the ability to position various cells, extracellular matrices, nanoparticles, in 
particular locations to develop a multi-material three-dimensional construct would be an important advance that could likely happen within the next three, four, five years or so. Uh, these kinds of constructs would be initially applied in drug discovery area and so that is one application area which is uh, where you can print different types of cells that are of importance uh, in disease processes and then try to test drugs in them. Uh, the next major application area development would be in bioreactor technologies that could serve as implantable bioreactors. So for instance, um, insulin producing cells could be embedded so that uh, automatically the body can produce these uh, uh, hormones that are of interest. Uh, and then finally, truly fully functional organs which have all the capabilities and abilities that occur in nature would be developed. So this is sort of from the near term to the long term uh, development of these technologies. Bioprinting technologies offer hope for all medical patients that require transplants. With further development, this technology can produce clinically useful tissues and major organs. Estimates for a date when an organ bioprinting will be viable vary. However, the sheer number of research scientists working in the 3D bioprinting field, coupled with the development in an industry that is predicted to be worth more than $1.3 billion by 2021, means that we can be sure that that date isn't too far away.